Hey guys, welcome back. It's Missy, and if you're new here, welcome. I am a life and relationship coach, and on this channel, we get to the root of the issue and we learn how to heal and deal. So if that's your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of the fam. And if you already are a subscriber, I really appreciate you so much. So today we're gonna be talking about being the child scapegoat in your family. So if you grow up in a narcissistic home or a controlling home or an abusive home, usually each of the kids play different roles. And the worst role to have is being the scapegoat. The scapegoat child is labeled the problem child. They are the one that always seems to be at fault when things go wrong. They are the source of all of their narcissistic parents' issues. So they deal with the most rage, the most manipulation, the most gaslighting, the most emotional abuse, and even the most physical abuse or the most neglect. The reason why there is a scapegoat is because with a narcissistic parent, because they can't self-reflect, they need to have someone to blame for the wrongings and for when things are a problem. And because they are really projecting their own insecurities onto this child and they're deflecting. So how is a scapegoat picked? And it has nothing to do with the child. It has to do with the twisted mind of a narcissist. And the way a narcissist picks that child is if the child is more outspoken. So this child has a more of a mind of their own, so it's harder to manipulate them. This child is more um, inquisitive, so they ask a lot of questions. You are more curious, and when you're more curious, that creates problems in the family dynamic. Because you don't just accept what your narcissistic parent is saying you want to know why you want to understand this child is probably more sensitive and more empathetic and also if this child is not the image the narcissistic parent wanted or if they have negative traits that that narcissistic parent doesn't like and they can see in themselves they then will make that child the issue child or also it could be the opposite where they this child has positive things and the narcissist is jealous and they don't want them to outshine them so they will also make them the issue child or if this child has traits that they don't necessarily value you don't fit into the mold that they want or if this child can make the parent or the family look bad in any way they will be the problem child any way they can deflect or project these insecurities or issues onto this child they will so that way it doesn't come back to them they can maintain this perfect image of themselves and the roles can switch at any time so if like the golden child pisses the narcissistic parent off they could then become the new scapegoat and then you could be become the golden child um, these roles can change depending on who is pleasing the narcissist at the time but overall from what I've seen primarily you will be a role for a longer period of time and that's the role you will adapt to and each role has different effects so let's talk about the signs that you were the scapegoat child one the obvious like we talked about you get blamed for everything so anytime there's an issue you're at fault the parent the your narcissistic parent has a bad day you were the cause you weren't listening you made them upset it's raining it's your fault the narcissistic parent woke up late and they couldn't get to work on time it was your fault because you said good morning and they didn't want to say good morning to you and you were a waste of time anytime something goes wrong they will try to make you the reason why it didn't go right another sign is the abuse was ignored by other family members or they would tag along so uh, maybe like all of your family members like your brothers and your sisters and your parents would all mock you together Or if you were getting screamed at by your narcissistic parent your other parent didn't say a word or They would uh, join in when this happens this then reinforces in your mind that You deserve this or that it was valid in what they're doing because if there's multiple people doing it Then it must be you you're the issue Another sign is you are the fixer of the family. So anytime something's wrong, you will jump in and try to problem solve. You may try to be the savior. And when your narcissistic parent is in a bad mood, you will try to fix it and solve it. Or if there's fighting going on, you will tr go in the middle and you will try to resolve the fighting. 
you were very good at coming up with solutions to problems because you were always you always felt like you had to be in that position of taking care of your family members and fixing all the issues and also when you become the fixer you also are in a way of looking for your family's approval you're doing something right you're always looking for a way that you can stop being the problem or the bad child you just beg that they will love you the way that you deserve to be loved which goes into the next sign is that you can actually see what's wrong in your family because you are not so easily manipulated and because you have very strong intuition you can sense where things are wrong you can smell the illness <laughs> things don't really make sense to you because your family says one thing but then they act in a different manner so you will question a lot because you're that inquisitive kid that always has a lot of questions you will question a lot like why is it like this it doesn't make sense so because of that you can see the fault in your family members and it's something that they don't like because you threaten your narcissistic parents delusional world so your narcissistic parent tries to create this delusional world and make it seem like you guys are a happy loving family and you are like no that's not what's going on another sign is that people outside your family like neighbors your narcissistic parents friends teachers you know they all know you as a bad kid because your narcissistic parent may complain about you a lot or they were like oh you know they're acting up again they always make you fit this role that you are such an issue and that they tell everyone and so they fit you in this narrative and so these people may also go up to you and be like oh why can't you just behave for your father why can't you just behave for your mother or maybe they'll talk to them about you know sending you to a behavioral school or you know they always make it seem like you are such an issue maybe they send you to therapists to get fixed or they put you on medication because you were such an issue and other people know it. The next sign is that you are extremely empathetic. You feel for others so intensely. You can, when you go in a room, you can sense everyone's emotions. And this is a positive and a negative. It's a positive because since you are so empathetic, you won't hurt other people the way that you were hurt. And you can feel for other people unlike your narcissistic parent but it's bad because you may notice you have a hard time being empathetic towards yourself so it's very easy for you to be empathetic towards others but you're very harsh on yourself and it's hard to be compassionate towards yourself and also because your ability to empathize with others it can open the portal of other toxic unhealthy people coming in because they see that they see your ability to empathize and they don't have that they have that hole of lack of empathy so they want to suck that out of you they want you to take care of them they want to manipulate you because you are so empathetic and the reason why you are so empathetic is because you had to read your parents emotions to be able to dictate okay I behave like this to you know make them happy and I have to behave like this oh they're on edge I have to be careful and you're always walking on eggshells and you have to observe and read exactly how they're feeling so you can mold yourself into what they need you to be so you don't have to deal with the abuse and so you have this urge to protect others because you know what it's like to be abused so badly and you don't want anyone else to feel that way and that is a beautiful part of being an empath and also when you have an urge to protect others that includes your narcissistic parent you may be extremely empathetic towards your narcissistic parent because you were always labeled the problem child and you know what that feels like and you know what it's like for people to be against you you may really empathize with your narcissistic parent and you feel bad for them because they lack the self-awareness. They don't realize how delusional or wrong they are. So you could pity them. So you also may become very defensive and have this urge to protect them because of the trauma they dealt with as a child. It's easy to make excuses for their bad behavior. And also as a child, and I've said this so many times, but you can't reason. And this is your parent. This is the only parent you'll have. So of course you're gonna want to protect them because the minute you don't, you really realize what you have and you don't have a kind, caring, nurturing, empathetic parent. You have a bully and that is very painful to experience. So you may protect 
this parent to protect from dealing with that reality. The next thing is self-blame. So you will notice that you always have to take accountability for things. So even if someone wronged you, you can be pissed at them, but then immediately you'll turn it on yourself. And you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Or like, let me put myself in their shoes. Like maybe I would behave like that. You always internalize it and think about where you're in the wrong. Or you always think you're at fault. And so it's hard for you to hold others accountable. The camera just cut me off. <laughs> You'll think maybe I was behaving inappropriately. So like I said earlier, when you start to hold other people accountable, you'll immediately internalize and turn it towards yourself and see where you were the problem, where you were wrong, because you're so used to always being at fault for you being the issue. So your go-to, your brain is wired that way. Your go-to is to look at yourself constantly, look at yourself because you feel like you're never enough or you are always the one that's creating issues. It's never rarely anyone else. You never saw others take accountability. The next one is you will act out. Here's the thing. If you're constantly being told over and over again how bad you are, you're the problem child, you create so many issues, you eventually will become that. If they become the voice in your head, you will now act on that. So you may get into trouble. You may back talk. This is because you never really felt heard. You're hurting inside. Little you is just screaming out, wishing that you could be loved. You need an outlet. So the only outlet you have is to act out, is to be defiant. And also you are reacting to your environment. You're reacting to the abuse you've endured. So you're, when your narcissistic parent picks on you, your only outlet may be to act out and scream. And then again, you fit in that narrative of look, uh, look, Look how he or she's behaving again. This is why she's not trusted. Look how disrespectful they are. This is why you get nothing. But really, you're just reacting to the abuse you're enduring. And also, you may lack emotional regulation, which also will cause you to act out. And it's because you're most likely dealing with CPTSD. And so you will get dysregulated in your mind. So you'll, you will go from your reasoning part of your brain to the more emotional part, because that's where you're trying to survive. Your fight, flight, or freeze is kicking in. And so you have a really hard time regulating your emotions. And so anger may come out very easily. You may go into crying fits. You may not be able to communicate. So going into how all this abuse affects you, you most likely will deal with a lot of guilt. You will deal with a lot of shame. You may be very codependent, so you're always looking for the validation from others. You will have low self-worth and feelings of never being enough. And you will always seek the approval of others, especially people that remind you of your narcissistic parent, which leads to it's hard for you to have healthy relationships. You may find yourself in relationships where you become the scapegoat. You may also likely be suffering from complex post-trauma. You also will feel this emptiness and the lack of self-love, which will lead to addictions. It could be uh, coping with food, it could be drugs, it could be alcohol, it could be sex, it could be relationships. You also may be a huge overthinker and it's very hard for you to make decisions because you don't trust yourself and you are always taught to doubt yourself. And you also, because of those feelings of never being good enough, you also may struggle with body image issues. You may have struggled with an eating disorder because that also makes you feel in control and it's another way to gain attention and feeling better about yourself. Or it, you could also have really bad body dysmorphia where you don't like who you see in the mirror. And again, like I said, the lack of emotional regulation, you have a really hard time regulating your emotions. You may get very angry very quickly. When you're in a bad state, you may say things you don't necessarily mean. You ha it's really hard to have that self-control when you are triggered. So how do you free yourself from being the scapegoat? You have to give yourself permission to walk away and set boundaries. It is not your job to fix your family. You cannot take that on all by yourself. This is a cycle of abuse. They dealt with things in their childhood and then they now put it on their kids. And you have to accept that that's the way they are. 
you can't fix them you can't change them there is no point in calling them out because it will just re-traumatize you they cannot self-reflect you are wasting your time by trying to help them so you need to focus on yourself and your own healing journey you need to allow yourself to walk away you need to tell yourself that it's okay for you to take care of yourself now you are not this person they tried to tell you you were you are a completely different person they did not value you they didn't see your worth and that's their fault that's their problem don't allow them to tell you who you are because you are a much more beautiful person that they never valued and when you go back into the fix it mode just understand they never will value it even if they come back and they're begging for your help they never valued it and they never will they cannot appreciate the person that you are so set boundaries with them don't give them so much focus on yourself and your own needs which is something you've never done in your life and stop taking responsibility for everything not just with your family but with people in general it can't always be your fault you can always look at a situation and see where they're wrong and then you can also ask yourself how do i feel how i did in this situation was there any point that i went against my morals or my values if you did then you can see okay this is a learning moment where i can grow or maybe i need to apologize if you didn't feel that you did then you don't need to overthink it you need to be firm and say you know i don't think i did anything wrong i think this person yelled at me when i was just standing and doing nothing and it's really important that you don't get into that victim role because it can become very easy when you're constantly abused and gaslit and you're always in these unhealthy situations it's very easy to victimize ourselves but when you get into that victim role then it's very hard to get out of it you then give your power away so it's okay to acknowledge hey my parents did these horrible things to me but now it's up to you what are you going to do about it now it's your responsibility now to take care of it it's your responsibility to heal these wounds now you can understand where it comes from you can understand what they did in the wrong but what are you going to do to heal and the last thing listen to your gut you are such a smart person you are the one that is going to stop the cycle of abuse you knew what was going on with your family you have that intuition listen to it it won't steer you wrong and i have a video on insecurity versus intuition if you don't know if you could trust your intuition and i explain more about insecurity versus intuition but that gut instinct will steer you right so listen to it so what do you guys think are you a scapegoat let me know your stories down below and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with someone that you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye, guys. On my. Hey, guys, welcome back. It's Missy. Oh my god, you're disgusting. And so I like it. So today, we're gonna be talking about this scapegoat. What are we talking about today?